Hey folks, welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith. My name is Angie, and on this channel we discuss AI-assisted writing programs, prompts, and marketing. Today, however, we're going to continue our series for Camp NaNoWriMo. For those of you just joining us, I put out a poll to our community to get feedback on what I should write for Camp NaNoWriMo, a serialized science fiction romance won by a landslide. If you missed the first two videos in the series, start there and then come back. Since I started that project, there have been several questions on what serialized fiction is. Plus, I wanted to share with you some ways that you can actually get paid while you're writing. And, as always, you can get to this Notion document from the video description below, as well as find the timestamps to get to the sections of the video that you're most interested in. So, without further ado, let's go. Okay, so we're going to start with what serialized fiction is. Then we'll talk about how it differs from your normal series writing. And then we're going to go into where you can publish it. And then throughout, there will be references as well for you to check out. So what exactly is serialized fiction? So it's when you have a really long story. Usually it's a super long arc and it is told in small pieces, also known as episodes. Typically with these, you're going to end with some kind of hook or a cliffhanger to keep people engaged. There's also ways that you can make sure that you are keeping people engaged from one season to the next season. So you've got episodes and you've got seasons. And where does that sound familiar from? Television, a serialized fiction like a TV show. So you can read here about the historical context. People have so much less attention. The attention spans are smaller and smaller. People like you and me who are ADHD. And it's easy for someone to sit down and read an episode of their favorite serialized story, which is usually in the neighborhood of one to 3,000 words, like out lunch or something like that. So it's made for people to consume in smaller chunks, but over a longer period of time. So another really cool thing about serialized fiction is that it allows you to get your story to your reader sooner and have them engage with you. So you can actually take their feedback and adjust what you're writing. It's also much easier for people to discover it and then go back and get caught up, as well as me and you who are ADHD. It's a lot easier for us to write a serialized story because we're writing in smaller chunks. And obviously, you can use AI to help you write serialized fiction. I know several authors who use it. One in particular will go and create all of the prose all at one time. They'll do like a hundred episodes at one time. And then they'll take their time and go back in and do the edits and then publish as they are doing their edits. So what are some of the benefits of writing serialized fiction? Again, I talked about engaging your audience. So you have the ability to begin getting readers and getting a fan base. It also allows you to have some more creative flexibility. For those of you who like to write big stories and super big worlds and who just love world building, you are going to be an addict with serialized fiction because you need really big stories to be able to fill up these multiple seasons. And then also you have the ability to monetize your episodes and have a steady a stream of funds coming in as you're actually writing your stories. Now, I have read most recently this Unstoppable Storyteller by Kim Boo York. It's really good. I also enjoyed the Write Plan Publish Serial Fiction. I definitely recommend this first one first. Okay, so how is a serialized fiction different than actually writing a series? The definition, you could read it yourself. But basically, you've got a story that is told in shorter segments, which are episodes. You're going to have cliffhangers. It's going to continue to develop. And honestly, it's probably going to become much bigger as you continue to write. 
and you're able to release it on digital platforms and get real-time feedback from your readers. Now, if you're writing a series, then that is separate but related books. You could do something that's a trilogy that's the same people over three books, or you can have something that's it's a world and it has different people in each book, but there's some kind of interconnection with either characters or the world that they live in. A book or a series, you're going to have a plot and it's going to be a much smaller thing. It can have an overarching story, but it's usually much smaller. It's usually resolved. At least a good part of it is resolved within the book itself, but there may be things that are carried over to the next. And you are typically going to publish those in book format. You write the book, you publish the book, and then you get the feedback. So let's talk about where you can go and publish your serialized fiction. So probably one of the most well-known places to publish your serialized fiction, it's going to be the Kindle Vela program. So a couple years back, Amazon decided to give us this platform for serialized fiction. And there's definitely some pros and cons to it. Definitely the pros, you're going to be able to have the reach of Amazon. It's also integrated with their ecosystem. So you actually get paid the same place through KDP where you're publishing your other books and you earn through their token system. Now cons is that it is for US-based authors. So if you're not in the US, you are SOL. So revenue is based on tokens, which can vary, as well as competition due to the popularity of the program. So on all of these, I went back in and I added this little section on getting paid because at the end of the day, I want to get paid. What I found out from my research, because I've never used Vela, I don't know if I will use Vela, but you get 50% of the money for the tokens that are used to unlock your episodes. It mentioned that the first episodes are always free. And if someone has free tokens, because I, I know that I have a few free tokens in my account, that any of the free tokens that are spent on your episodes, they don't count. So those don't go towards you getting any money. However, any that are paid for, you're going to get half of the amount of money that was spent on those tokens. Royalties are paid monthly, just like with any other book on KDP. And you're going to get paid 60 days after the end of the month where the tokens were spent. So the exact same if you sell a book, the end of that month, it's still another two months before you get paid. So you're going to have uh, quite a bit of a weight on that. They also have a bonus system that takes into consideration reader engagement, including uh, the amount of tokens that are spent on your stuff. I've heard conflicting information that at first people were making a lot of money because they were getting the bonuses. Let's take a look at what Bella looks like really quick. Okay, here we are in my handy dandy special browser where I look at Amazon. So I'm not logged in. I have no cookies. So this is what it looks like to someone just coming in to the Vela site. So here you can see the uh, top fave. You can see the featured stories, the ones that are completed and the ones that also receive regular updates. And if you come down here, you can see, I think this is how many episodes it has. This is how many, I, I guess those are faves. You can come through here and you can see the different genres of stories that are in the top stories. So you can see we've got fantasy romance. We've got new adult romance. Here's another new adult romance, thriller romance, LGBT fiction. We've got another TV thriller here, paranormal romance. So you can just scroll through here and see what's popular. If you write in one of these categories, this might be an opportunity for you. And then I also know that there are quite a few authors who they'll finish their season on Vela and then take it over to KDP and turn it into a book. So that is also an opportunity there for you as well. So let's get back and look at the next one. The next stop on our list is going to be Reem. And it's at reamstories.com. So it's a subscription platform 
that was created by authors for authors, and it focuses specifically on serialized fiction. It, again, was created by people who are authors, so there's strong support and author-focused features. You have more control of over your publication and your monetization. I noticed that there is much greater d- amount of genres on there than there is on Fella and some of the other platforms. I was looking to see where would be the best place for me to put my science fiction romance serial, and the best place for me to put it actually would be on Ream. So I looked at a couple other places and I couldn't find a lot of readership where they were interested in science fiction romance. They have the ability to add multiple pen names to one account. So if you are publishing under multiple pen names, then this is an opportunity for you to have everything all in one spot. Now, for the cons, I put the fact that you need to come with your own subscriber base or your own fans to start bringing people to your Ream page. You're going to be the one who is selling this. It's not going to be discovered on like Amazon. But if you have books on Amazon, you can always send people from your Amazon books to your Ream. So you're going to be needing to do more marketing efforts. And it's a relatively new platform to get paid. You are going to be paying them 10% plus their credit card processing fee. So as someone who works for a credit card processing company, yeah, 2.9% plus 30 cents. That's actually a little bit high. Not terrible, but it's a little bit on the high side. But considering this is retail, you got to do what you got to do. Now, the funds are going to be available on a two-day rolling basis. So basically, the person pays, and then two days later, it's then available for you. And then you can either request a payout if you have more than $50, because there's a $50 minimum, or you can have automatic disbursement on the 10th of each month. So that is a ream, and let's take a look. Okay, here we are on Ream. You can actually see I don't have any books bookmarked because I have not read anything on Ream yet. So we've got these rising Reamers. We've got the genres. And because I don't actually use it to read other people's stuff, it doesn't really have any information about me. Now, I actually had set this up in a previous video. Here we go. I don't have anything on here. Aurora Morgan is actually a pen name for children, so I don't see children buying anything on Ream, but that's neither here nor there. And you can see that they've got the balance, and we've got the available balance and the pending balance. You can see here, and if you come down here, it gives you the in- income information, so it talks about your payouts and disbursements. If you come up here and click this, you can actually create another page for a pen name, or as they say, launch a different type of membership. So that is Ream. And let's move back and move on to the next one. Next stop on our tour here is Patreon. Patreon has been around for quite a while as a way that allows creators to be paid by the people that like their work. I know a lot of people who are content creators, such as myself, use Patreon. There are also a lot of artists. And I've actually my lifetime, have supported a large number of artists on Patreon. Pros of Patreon are direct and consistent revenue from subscribers. Now, once you read this getting paid section, I think you'll disagree on on that. And I'm right there with you. I did a lot more research today on how to get paid from these people. And let's just say I'm not pleased with Patreon. There's also flexibility on the format of the content. So you can post videos, you can post content. I know Patreon and Ream allow you to post erotica, so you can have not safe for work content on both of these platforms. You also have the ability to interact with your fan base. When you post something, then there's the ability to have comments, and then you can have threads underneath those. So cons, it takes a lot of effort to build and maintain a Patreon base. You are going to be heavily self-promoting it and trying to get people involved. And also, it is not a writing platform, uh, where uh, Ream is actually built as a writing platform. Patreon is not. So it might be a little bit more challenging to get things to line up as far as 
maybe having a single post where you have all of the episodes for a specific book. Okay, getting paid. Patreon has two plans. They've got Pro and they have Premium. Pro is 8% and Premium is 12%. So that is what you pay to use the platform. And that is of all of your Patreon earnings. You're also, and this was a minuscule gray print. It said you're also responsible for the payment processing, the currency conversions, and any payout fee. You can also sell products on Patreon, but the pricing is much more complicated. It looked like you could get access to your funds maybe seven days after something processed, but if it was on Apple Pay, it was like 75 days, and I was just, it was weird. Also, they mentioned that after your first pledge, you're not able to withdraw anything for at least five days. Now, once those funds are finally available in your creator balance, you can withdraw them or you can have an automatic payment come out on the fifth of the month. And that's something that you have to opt into. Okay. I'm not even going to pull up Patreon. I, I'm going to be honest. I am. No, personally, at least. If you want to go check it out, the link is actually right up here. Okay. Last stop on this fun tour is going to be Later Press. It's got a user-friendly interface. You retain full rights to your work. You have the ability to have some very basic analytics. And it also allows you to build your email list by requiring your readers to sign in to read your episodes. Now, cons, it's a lesser known platform. You have the ability to do annual subscriptions, but you don't have the ability to do monthly subscriptions just yet. And it's still in the growing phase. So one of the cool things about Later Press, though, is that you are getting paid directly via Stripe for any of your purchases. So anyone buys anything from your Later Press account, that goes right into your Stripe account. And then you're going to be paying whatever the transaction fee is for that. But Later Press doesn't touch that at all. So that's right out of the gate. Later Press doesn't touch your funds. Now, if you subscribe to their author community features, though, which allows other authors, readers, and the actual platform itself to recommend your book to potential readers, there's actually a 15% fee that is assessed on top of your Stripe fee. And this is more or less, it's a recommendation or referral fee. Let's go look at that because I actually have a Later Press account. Okay, here we are on the Later Press website. No platform fees for direct sales. And you can actually go through here and I will tell you, there's very few emails every week that I like to get, but Nate's email that he sends every Thursday is one of my favorite things to read every week. And I like it because in addition to having news about writing and what he's working on too, he also recommends a later press customer for everyone on the email list to take a look at. So I think that's really awesome. So you can go through here and learn more about later press, but I actually have my account here. And this is a project that I was working on last year. And it got put to the side because I had too much going on. But here we go. You can actually view. Here it is. So here's my pen name. But you can go in here and read. And you can save your progress, but that's for that. It's a really cool platform. They're getting ready to launch some new stuff. And if I know Nate, it's going to be amazing. And hopefully we'll be able to get him here on the channel to talk more about later press. So there's other ways and other places that you can go and publish your work. There's even publishers that publish serialized fiction. I know eGlobal is one of those publishers. And that's another email I enjoy getting every week is actually from eGlobal. So there's Radish, which is an app that you can apply to become a writer for. Wattpad. My big turnoff for Wattpad is the age of the users. Wattpad users are usually on the young side. So if you're writing a young adult, that would be great for them. Also with Radish, when I was doing my research for my science fiction romance, I noticed that they didn't have any science fiction on their platform. They definitely had paranormal and they definitely had contemporary. And I believe they also had young adult as well. 
but it was all rovian at least from what i saw there's also tapas which you need to be careful with tap tapas because they don't want ai anything on their platform i know people who have published ai assisted writing on their platform but from what i've heard they're pretty much anti -AI. if you are a person who is a wordpress user and you want to play with some e-commerce and membership plugins, then have at it. You can actually add it to your WordPress website as well. Again, not me. <laughs> I'm not going there. I bet you could also probably use Ghost as well. So ghost.org is another option. I'll add it to the end too. But that is, it's more of a blogging platform that has the ability to add members and sell memberships to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, we talked about what is serialized fiction, how it differs from your normal series or your standalone. And we've talked about four different places that you can publish. You got to hear how much I dislike the stuff that's happening at Patreon, trying to get you guys paid. I will not be supporting them. And I've also shared a couple of resources that you can use to learn more about serialized fiction. I know there's going to be questions. Just put them in the comments below. We'll get them as they come in. And if there is enough questions, then we will just do a uh, community roundup of the questions and we'll do a, a Q&A session again. I'm definitely excited about working on this project. I think that the serialized format will work better with my ADHD between serialized and novellas, I think I'm going to be good to go. And I'm definitely excited to get back into the planning stages of this project with you guys along for the ride. So then I can actually write this during Camp NaNoWriMo in June. So we've got a little less than a month and a half to get it together. And I can't wait for you guys to be along for the ride. You guys have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon.